So in this video, I'm going to continue to talk about different forms of mathematical communication and how to use them appropriately in your exploration, in your, in your math writing, and in your math writing. Um, in this video in particular, I want to talk about diagrams. So criterion B in, in the math IA, which is about mathematical communication, um, they, they give some general guidance, which, and I say this for all of them, you're supposed to use appropriate mathematical language, you're supposed to define key terms and variables, and you're supposed to use multiple forms of math representation. But what you're not told is sort of how to use those mathematical representations appropriately or consistently throughout your paper. Um, and so in this video, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is diagrams. So the first thing that I want to say about, about diagrams is the purpose of diagram is diagrams are generally there, they're included to provide some sort of visual representation of some components for your math exploration. So it's not uncommon for there to be a formula or an equation that you want to use that you might have a diagram that goes along with it to help make sense of it. Um, or it might, it might not be to do some... Uh, like a visual representation of math, it might just be a visual representation in general. You might decide that you want to include, you know, information about, you know, a volleyball court because you're doing an exploration about that. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of jump around in my guidance here. Remember that these diagrams should fit in the flow of the document. So for instance, if you decide you want to include a, a diagram of a volleyball court, there needs to be a reason for that. Like it, it needs to fit into the flow of the thing. So just because you're doing something on volleyball doesn't mean you need to include a diagram unless that diagram is going to be helpful in conveying something that you're doing in your exploration. Um, so because there's no limit to the number of types of diagrams, there's no complete list of how to handle all of them. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to give sort of general comments, general guidance for how we should handle diagrams in general. Um, and the first thing that I want to say is that you shouldn't feel like you have to computer generate all of your diagrams. There are some diagrams that you can make really easily on a computer and they look really great and other ones are horrible. Um, I know that like a, a and part of the reason I'm doing tree diagrams today is tree diagrams. I, like I haven't found a really good app that I like to use for creating tree diagrams. So lots of times I just hand draw them. Um, and so I want to let you know if you can't make it look good or make it look the way you want it to on a computer, feel free to just make the diagram by hand. Um, it's nice if you can spend a little bit of extra time on it to make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Um, but you know you don't have to computer. Not everything needs to be perfect in this thing. Um, they want to know that you're communicating well mathematically. Um, if you do hand draw the diagram, just draw carefully on a blank sheet of paper and scan it and include it in your document. Um, it's a good idea to keep the original in case you decide to add a little bit more detail or you decide to change something. If you do it on a white sheet of paper, you can just use some like whiteout and, and write over it. When you do the scan of it, it'll probably look just fine. Um, I mentioned already that your diagram should fit into the flow of your document, um, but just like we do with every math communication, um, we need to explain why it's there, show and help the reader understand what it's there for, what they're supposed to do with it. Um, I kind of already mentioned this, um, diagrams require explanations. Like you, you can, even if it's a tree diagram where oh, everybody knows how a tree diagram works, Show them that you know how, and second, make sure that they really are following how you want them to understand it. Um, finally, and this is true of pretty much all math communication, do your best to keep the explanations or references to that diagram on the same page as the diagram. If you really need to refer to it again later, you might even consider putting it into the paper again. You can, and, and be honest about that. Say, you know, because we're going to be looking at the diagram closely again, I have reproduced here the diagram from page three so that you can reference it. At that point, it doesn't feel like it's not concise. Like, oh, why did you include that again? Well, I included it because I wanted you to see it. Um, as long as you provide reasoning for the things that you do, you're generally not going to be wrong about how you communicate. So that gives some sense of some general comments that we might give. Um, and so now I want to do as, as I've done in these other videos. I want to go in and, and look at some examples and look at how we might progress from not doing a diagram so great into to using it better. Um, so like I said, I'm going to be looking at tree diagrams. Um, so consider an exploration that was done on the probability of getting a specific hero in a mobile game. So I actually did one of these. I, I did one of them in particular. Um, and when I did that one, I actually didn't include any, any diagrams. Um, and so I'm kind of coming back and including those now. 
Um, so the first level of this example, um, the, the IA, the exploration, might say the diagram below shows a tree diagram with the probabilities of getting the hero we want in the first three card flips. And so you can see I've got a tree diagram here. <clears throat> um, it's kind of an asymmetrical tree diagram. You might be wondering, huh, why doesn't, why doesn't the top one have any branches coming out of it? Um, and then there's a bunch of numbers here. For some reason, there's like some breaks in the lines down here. And then afterward, it says, so the probability of getting out here in the first three flips is three ninths. Um, getting out here in the first three, yeah. Um, and you might be wondering, like, where did that come from? Like, well, I, I'm, the, 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 I can see the diagram, but I, the, the, the writing isn't helping me to understand how the diagram is helping me to get this number that's here. <clears throat> um, and so, you know, there are some things that are done well here. There is some appropriate use of math notation. I can see that, that the writer used H for this one and then H prime for the complement, which means not that. <clears throat> um, there's also numbers provided on the diagram, which helps. Um, but the numbers in the math and the diagram really aren't explained at all. So for as much as the numbers help a little bit, they don't help me to see that the, that the student, that the person writing this, understands the math that's going into it. Um, there really isn't much in the way of notation on this other than, sorry, other than the H and the H prime. Um, and on top of that, we didn't really like define that event at all. Like it probably means hero and not hero, but even that's not really defined. Um, the math notation here is also just really not acceptable. Like this use of the star, the asterisk for, for multiplication, is not an appropriate mathematical notation. In theory, you could argue that because Word won't let you type equations into those things, um, this thing, by the way, is called a text box. I got to it by doing insert and then text box. It's like way over here on the on the ribbon up here. Um, you could argue that like because you can't put an equation there, that was the best I could do, and so blah, 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 blah. But in the end, it doesn't look good. It, it's not... It's not ma represented mathematically correctly. Um, there's also no indication of how this connects to our aim, how the reader's supposed to interact with this. There's also some graphical issues with the diagram. You notice that the reason these lines break down here is because the text boxes go over them. And I would have needed to like right click on it and then go send to back. And then the line shows up over it. So there's, <clears throat> there's just numerous things about this diagram. Um, that are problematic. Um, we'd like to make it better, right? Um, so continuing on to example two, you can see that I wrote a lot more in the text for the beginning of this. <clears throat> um, the diagram shows a tree diagram with the probabilities of getting the hero we want in the first three card flips. In the diagram, the event H represents that the desired hero was obtained in that card flip. And then it tries to explain the first level of the tree represents the first draw, the second level of the tree represents the second draw, and so on. The reason that the top branch doesn't continue on to the next level is that the top branch represents getting our hero on the first flip, but as soon as we get our hero, we'll stop flipping cards as we've already achieved our goal. So you can see that in that, in that paragraph at the beginning, I explain a lot more of why this tree diagram looks the way that it does, um, of what the different levels of the tree represent, like why there's an H here and an H here and an H here. Like, are those the same? Are they different? <clears throat> In the text afterward, um, I also went and gave a little bit more information, right? The number at the end of each path, so the one ninth and this one and this one and this one, um, those represent the total probability of that sequence of events. For instance, the two thirds down here at the bottom, at the bottommost pathway, comes from doing eight ninths times seven eighths times six sevenths, and it represents not getting the hero in the first, second, or the third draws. <clears throat> so you can see how in this one I've got the, the tree diagram, but then I'm doing explaining before and after it of how I'm supposed to use it, what this thing does, why it's helpful. And that's doing both showing my knowledge and understanding of what's going on, and it's also helping the reader to get, oh, I see what that means. I get why that works now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Improvements, what was done well, um, the events were well defined now, yay. And then the numbers and the math and the diagram are explained before and after the diagram. That helps a lot. Things that could be improved, there still wasn't much notation happening here. 
Um, even in the, the text before and afterward, it didn't do much there. Uh, probability has a lot of notation that happens in it. Um, and this is a good opportunity for us to show that we know how to use that notation. It's part of what we're supposed to do in, in the math exploration. Um, I also have to point out the math notation still isn't really acceptable. Um, that's sort of the same reason, the same weakness that I gave previously. So let's look at one more improvement. And uh, we're going to see if we call this an improvement or not. For this one, I decided to hand draw the diagram. Um, and I did a little, I changed up the, the description of this a little bit more. Um, the diagram below shows a tree diagram with the probabilities of getting the hero we want in the first three card flips. In the diagram, the event H sub N represents that the desired hero is obtained on the nth card flip. So for example, me giving an example, the probability of H sub 1 is 1 ninth means that the probability of getting our hero on the first flip is 1 ninth. Um, this part is the same description I gave before of why the diagram is sort of asymmetrical. <coughs> and then I have my diagram. I did not do an amazing job here. I could have used a straight edge. Um, I was a little bit pressed for time making the video. Um, really not an excuse. You might be pressed, pressed for time making your, uh, your video, your, your IA when you do the final version of it. Um, but I kind of wanted to point out that by doing this by hand, I was able to fit a lot more on these lines. And while this diagram might be busier, it's a lot more precise. There's a lot more information that's being given here. And because I was more precise there, I'm also able to be more precise in my description afterward. The number at the end of each path in the tree diagram is the total probability of that sequence of events. For instance, the two-thirds at the end of the bottomless pathway comes from, and then I'm able to do equations here. I can say, hey, that's represented by the probability of h sub 1 not and not h sub 2 and not h sub 3. And then I could use a formula to show, where's that, show where that comes from, then multiply the pieces and finally get two-thirds. <clears throat> um, and really, I should, have, I should have put one more thing here. I should have explained what that is. This two-thirds um, of course, this is going to take a while for me to edit because I'm doing it as I'm recording the video. Um, this two-thirds uh, gives the probability oh man, that's typing that into the formula. No. Um, I'll say it out loud and I'll type it in the Word document that you guys will be able to see. At the end of this, I should have had something like, this two-thirds gives the total probability of not getting the hero we want in the first, second, or third flips. Um, so that'll be down there as you guys see it. Um, what was done well here? All the things. Um, we defined the events well. Um, the diagram also showed appropriate notation and the student followed that, the diagram, with good mathematical explanation using that appropriate notation. So I really, what I wanted to get across to you is that a diagram is half about the diagram and half about how you mix it into all of your mathematical communication. So don't, don't forget to remember that. We're, we're trying to communicate mathematically across all we do, not just dropping things in. So I hope that made sense, and I hope that helps you to understand a little bit better how you can incorporate diagrams into your writing. So best of luck. See you next time.